Welcome to a new quick tip video. This time I'm going to talk about the filter and what you can do with it in conjunction with the voltage processor. And also I will show you some tricks with the voltage processor, what it's all about. It looks totally complicated, but in reality it's really simple. Um, but you can do tricky things with it. So let's start. Um, as you all know, the 2600 has a 24 dB filter, a four pole low pass filter with resonance, uh, and it has two different filter types. They both are sounding pretty much the same. Um, I mean, the 4072 has a little better bass response, but it's hardly audible. Um, I did some measurements and you can see that this has more non-linearities non than the other. So the 4012 is cleaner and has a stronger resonance peak. But all in all, they're sounding pretty much the same. Um, yeah. So let's take a listen. I turn up VCO3 in the mixer. So VCO3 is going now to the voltage controlled filter. From there it goes to the VCA. We need to turn up the VCA input of the VCF. Turn up initial gain of the VCA because there's no trigger going on. And turn up this fader which mixes the VCA to the output. Um, yeah, we just hear this crackling weird so we need to turn up the frequency a bit. Let's put it somewhere around here. So now you all know that this is the low pass filter. So now there's a trick to make a high pass filter using the low pass filter and an inverter. Um, this is because um, you know this from your door if you have like two signals which are face reversed against each other and you turn it up against the same level then um, the signal will be cancelled out completely. So for instance if I turn the if I um, if I just return the face of the saw. So let's take the saw output, put it into the inverter. So if you take this input, then you see the little label inverter, and you go with this output back to the mixer. Now the rising saw, it's a rising sawtooth, it's going to this fader and then it will be inverted in this section and it goes back to another fader um, but then it's a falling saw and if I now blend both together they will cancel so it will be quiet so this is phase cancelling or phase cancellation so and we, can, we can work with that if we now take the sawtooth and put it into the ring mod input of the VCA, um, then you will see you will get cancellation. And now we have a high pass filter. So the low pass filter is not a low pass anymore. Instead, it's a high pass filter. You see? So, these both two faders are face reversed against each other. The fader with the, with the label ring mod has a hidden inverter built in. So you don't need to go through this sec section to do face cancellation. You can do it really right here which makes it pretty simple. You just need one patch cable and you can have a high pass filter. Please note, if you turn up the resonance now, 
Let's listen to the low pass. If you turn up the resonance, it will be quiet, you see? So, so the volume is dropping, as you can see, and as you can hear. What now happens is, if I turn back this fader, the effect is not so strong. And that's because now the direct signal of the Thortus going to the ring mod input is much louder than this fader. So if you listen solo, this has this level. That's the output of the VCF low pass filter. And that's much louder. So what we have to do now is to find the point where it cancels against each other. Here. Yeah. Perfect. And now you have a resonant high pass. Okay? Okay, pretty easy. Um, what can we do now with the voltage processor? So in general, the voltage processor is a mixer. It has some tools like the inverter. It has a lag processor, so the last fader is a lag processor. It will slew incoming signals. So if you, like for instance, if you put in a square wave and turn up lag, then you will have at the output like a rounded square. So, um, yeah. And you can use this for um, doing portamento with the keyboard um, or just use the keyboard CV, patch it here, go back to one oscillator and the other oscillator will be patched directly. So you only have one oscillator which is uh, doing portamento or glide. Um, you can use it as a filter. So let's try this. So again, we are using the sawtooth. Put it into the envelope follower this time. Let's hear it directly. And now we're going straight to the output. You hear this? If I patch it direct. So a lot of high frequency content. If I go through the lag processor, it's like a low pass filter, which will be even, even stronger if we turn it up. And you can totally blend the signal off. But this is quite useful if you just want to round out some waveforms, like a emergency low pass filter. Of course, this has no resonance or other tricks. Anyway, um, so as you can see, these little labels, these show the pre-patched connections. The keyboard CV, which is coming from outside, it's patched to this fader and it will be mixed together to this inverter, to this output. So here's the output and the little numbers show you the inputs. So this is the group which will be mixed together to this output. So input one, input two, input three, input four will be mixed together. Then the whole signal will be inverted. And here's the output which you can send everywhere. And you can mix all kinds of stuff. You can mix audio signals, you can mix control signals. Um, so it will work with everything. Um, and as you can see, the keyboard CV, I said this before, it's pre-patched. So if you play notes and you turn this fader up and then from this inverter, you go to the oscillators, then in fact, the keyboard will be reversed, which is quite funny. Um, Joe Zavinul from uh, Weather Report was known for this trick. So he played like if he played up on the keyboard, the tones went down and this can bring you to pretty much great ideas. Or you can use this, just send the output of this to one oscillator and the other oscillator will follow um, the keyboard voltage correctly. 
So one oscillator will up, the other will, will, will go down when you play on the keyboard. Um, especially if you do this with um, oscillator one, or th one and two, and then listen to the output of the ring mod. That is pretty interesting. Or if you use FM frequency modulation, also can also be very interesting. Um, so, and on input two, you see a little label, minus 10 volts. What does that mean? So here we have a steady voltage, a DC of minus 10 volt. And if you turn this up, because this is minus 10 volt, will be inverted. You can take this output, and in this output, you will have now plus 10 volt. And you can seamlessly fade it in. So you have like here it's zero volt. In the middle, you have five volts up to 10 volts. You can use this if you mix together other signals as an offset. So for instance, um, let me check. Um, yeah, let's take the LFO. So if you modulate the filter with the LFO, you see, um, if you listen, um, the output of the LFO is a bipolar signal. So that means now the cutoff frequency is around one kilohertz. But if you turn this fader up, it will go below one kilohertz and over one kilohertz. But what if you want to have a filter frequency of one kilohertz and you want to um, modulate only the range above one kilohertz? What you can do now is you can patch it to an input, or let's say this is quicker, take a longer cable, patch it to an input, take the inverted output, patch it to the keyboard CV, still the same. If I now move this fader, the whole modulation will, will be moved upwards. So if it's modulating like this, now it's modulating like this, you see? So it's really going up in another range. And same goes for this input where it says plus 10 volts. And it's followed again by an inverter. So what you have here, if you turn up this fader, is minus 10 volts. This is totally confusing. So keep in mind, minus 10 volt means in reality plus 10 volts, and plus 10 volts means minus 10 volts. Um, so yeah, use this input, use the inverted output, go here. Oh wait, this input. You see now, the whole modulation moves below the point. You see? Yeah, okay, so that was just an example to show you how this section works in general. Okay, so keep in mind you can mix together for the first group four signals. Two of them have a fader. Some signals are pre-patched, but the output will always be inverted. So if you need to, if you like have the keyboard CV here and want to mix it with an LFO, for instance, and use this to control the oscillators, then you need to patch it to this input here. Okay, the cable is much too long and then invert it again, okay? Okay, so seems like I was totally lost in a different topic, sorry. Um, back to the topic, so 
Um, the last topic was we have the low pass filter, right? And again, that's the low pass filter. And we do this again. Here, it's the point where it cancels. Resonant high pass filter, remember? Okay. So, we have a low pass filter, we have a resonant high pass filter. But, did I say we have four filters? Four different filter types? Yeah, we have. But it's tricky. I can tell you it's tricky. So, if you now involve this section, what we can do now is we take the output of the low pass filter, patch it here, and also the output of our high pass filter, which is now the output of the VCA. And if we mix both of these together, just plain, we mix them together and listen to the output of this. What we get now is a peaking filter. So, the frequency around the cutoff point will be louder and yeah that's what called a peaking filter and we can do another filter because now we have three filter types we have the low pass filter we have the high pass filter and we have the peaking filter what's missing exactly the notch filter so for making a notch filter what we can do now we can invert the output of our high pass filter and mix it back to the other signal and lower the volume a bit so the output of the VCA you make you need to move the level fader a bit and now okay I turned a bit on the tuning sorry see that's a notch filter okay okay so now we have four filters, all four filter types. You've seen how it works. So with a little phase inversion and mixing signals together, you can create many different filter types or filter characteristics and alter the sound of the unit even more, which is quite interesting. Um, because, I mean, it only has a low pass filter, right? Okay, so what can we do more with the voltage processor? Um, another thing you could do, which is quite funny. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not really funny, but let's say you use the output of, um, let me check, where do I have a longer cable? Um, wait a minute. Okay, so let's say, you will want to modulate the filter with an oscillator or modulate the waveform with an oscillator. We can do that, of course. But now, as it says on the label, it's a rising saw. It's a rising sawtooth. Okay, that's nice. But, I mean, what should I do if I want to have a falling sawtooth? 
You remember we can do this with an inverter. Go here, invert the signal, patch it back through the inverter, and now, now we have a falling sawtooth. That's quite funny. Also, another thing um, which has to do with how the oscillators work. Now we have the sawtooth and we can mix in the pulse of the same oscillator. But listen, it sounds weird. So what happens here, this is face reversed against the saw. So now it's face cancelling and it's not really what you would expect. Again, if we invert it, invert the signal, go back. Now it's what I would expect, okay? Okay, so I would suggest to experiment a lot what the inverters are doing. Try not to get too confused about this minus plus inverting thing. Um, and yeah, so this is pretty pretty funny. Um, let me check. Ah, yeah, I still <clears throat> have the SQ1 here. Um, so what's really interesting, ah, let's do a patch with it. Okay, CV out goes to keyboard CV input, the gate. Okay, yeah, take a longer cable. The gate of sequence A goes to the sample and hold clock. Switch down. And let's see, now we should... Okay. Okay, so here we go. So now we have a sequence running. And what if you're sequencing your unit and you don't um, you don't have a keyboard or anything and you can't really transpose it? Um, so if you want to change the key, which is the sequence playing, and you want to transpose it, you really can't do it. If you use the voltage processor, it's more or less an easy thing to do. So, you take the keyboard CV, just go to an input, patch it back from there to the keyboard CV. Ah, remember, it's inverted. Okay, so that doesn't work, but we have a second inverter. So, take the output. Okay, there we are. Um, I don't have a keyboard at hand now, but I can show you a simple different trick. So if you mixed, if you mix another signal, let's turn all those sequences down. So we have a second sequence going on, right? And with the second sequence, we can use the CVB out, go to the input of this mixer, and now uh, let's go to this step. Okay, I stop on this step, and now I can transpose it. So you can mix all this together and you still have free inputs. So what happens if you turn if you use the pulse wave of the LFO and mix it in and modulate it with it?
Okay. Okay, it's not funny. Huh, sounds nice. Okay, that's just an example, right? How about maybe you want a bit vibrato? Vibrato, is it right? Or vibrato? I don't know. And you can still transpose it. And what's really funny, you can transpose on different steps now. And if you now have different step lengths, It's a fun thing to do. <clears throat> so you can make really interesting things using this section. And you can do many things more. I would suggest to experiment with all this. Um, I'm sure there are many things um, that I missed with this video, but as it says, quick tip, in the description. I think this will be enough for today. Um, let me know in the comments if you have questions or uh, maybe you have some, some ideas and suggestions for me. Um, maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. Um, let me know. I hope you liked it and I hope it helps. See you next time.